Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here with EdChat Interactive. And today we have Ike Johnson, who's going to be talking about STEM challenges that motivate students. Let me share my screen a second. And you can see, oops, uh, huh, I, just, I just clicked on the wrong button. Okay, so um, so hopefully you see my my beautiful uh, title screen, STEM Challenges That Motivate Students with Ika Johnson. And uh, this, this session is really sponsored by 3D Bear, which is an augmented reality program that allows kids to create. One of the exercises, one of the examples that Ike is going to be showing is going to be using 3D Bear. And what you're coming here with is EdShed Interactive, which is a series of uh, interactive web events and this is uh, the second to last one that's scheduled for the summer uh, STEM challenge that motivate students we have another session with Monica Joshi on July 14th and then we'll start scheduling again in August so let me stop sharing my screen and um, Ika welcome Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be with y'all today and to share with you some of the things that my students do um, all the time. In fact, um, most of the challenges that you will see are things that my students and I did while we were on away from our actual physical campus. And so these were things that I utilized with my students to keep them engaged and motivated um, while we were away from one another. So do you want me to go ahead and yes. start my? Yeah, go ahead. It's um, yes. If you can share share your screen, or if you'd prefer, I, I could do it. Um, but you can you can share your you can put your okay. slides up. All right. Let's see. Um, share my screen. I might actually have to jump back into, there we go. But I want to go to the beginning. I'm sure it's not at the beginning, but we're going to try to go back to the beginning. Sorry. There we go. All right, so, okay. yep, I'm there. So this is STEM challenges that motivate students. And my name is Ika Johnson. And I'm not just, um, I'm, I'm a STEAM or STEM enthusiast. I would like to say I'm also a CTE teacher. So for me, um, being a CTE teacher at the middle school level is really exciting because, you know, I get the kids that are, you know, just starting to figure out, you know, they don't all want to be football players and doctors and lawyers and basketball players. Some of them are starting to figure out exactly what it is that they want to do. So a little bit about me. I'm a mom of for kiddos, I have three girls and their ages are 19, 15, and 10. And I have a son who is 16. Um, I'm also a dog mom. I put a picture of my dog for the oohs and ahs. And this is my dog, Tandra. She is my pampered pooch. And um, she I'm surprised that she is not um, up and around. But if you hear somebody barking, it's not me, it's the dog. I am also the band booster president for um, my school district. Um, I have, I've had three children in band at the same time. Um, right now I've got two children in band and I spend a lot of time, if I'm not in my classroom, I'm either on the field or next to the field, not marching, or um, in a concession stand um, or in the band hall. So I wear a lot of hats. Um, I'm not only a teacher at the SEMA Academy um, in my school, school district, but I'm also on the DFW regional team for the Texas Girls Collaborative Project. That is one of the missions of the Texas Girls Collaborative Project um, is to increase the number of girls that are interested in pursuing um, STEM as a career or as an interest, specifically in um, the upper upper grade levels, as well as um, college and careers. Um, it is a subsidiary of the, um, the Girls Collaborative Project 
that is nationwide. I'm also um, an Upward Bound instructor. I teach Upward Bound at the University of North Texas at Dallas, where I teach um, chemistry, physics, robotics, and um, coding. Most recently, we're, we're creating a game this summer. Um, but then I'm also a part of a few leadership networks. Um, there's one specific that's in my area called the Future School Leaders Network, and I enjoy um, growing. So that's a little bit about me. Um, two popsicle sticks and a rubber band and tell them to make something. And you would be surprised what those kids can make with a box, two popsicle sticks and a rubber band. Um, STEM builds resilience. Um, you'd also be surprised, or maybe not, how often um, kids quit on things. But when you throw in those STEM components, design thinking, et cetera, you'd be surprised how long a kid will work on um, a project. It encourages experimentation. Um, it encourages teamwork. I have a lot of kids in my class who come in and say, the first thing they say to me is, Ms. Johnson, I don't want to work with anybody else. And then when, they, when given the opportunity and they see that other people are working really well, a lot of times I can get them to join in um, with a group. It encourages knowledge application. In other words, what they know coming in actually um, means a lot. So a lot of times those kids that know a whole bunch about, say for instance, electronics, and the, uh, their group is trying to figure out how to make something um, move um, electronically, that person can come in with that knowledge and um, be the saver of the group. It teaches problem solving and it encourages adaptation. And so those are some of the benefits of STEM that I've seen, um, and I'm sure there are lots more, but those are some of the things that I've seen that I have appreciated a lot. All right, so why do STEM challenges? Well, frankly, the reason I do STEM challenges is because they're fun. The kids really get into them. Um, over the time that we were out of school, I did three separate STEM challenges, and they were optional. I did not require my students to do them, but one thing I wanted to make sure of was that every student, regardless of their socioeconomic status, whether or not they have technology, um, a, a computer, or a tablet, or a phone, I wanted to make sure that they had the opportunity to participate in my STEM challenges. So I made sure that the STEM challenges um, had materials that they could find at home, or um, there was another way that they could participate. And I even set up groups. And the kids really enjoyed that because it helped with that, um, you know, that SEL, that social emotional learning that they were missing out on by being at home away from their friends. Now STEM challenges for me, there's no failure. What's that? We don't deal in failure, we deal in success. What did you do? What were you able to do? What did you learn from that? So there's no failure. And again, you know, it's kind of like um, when you, you don't have a fear of failing, you actually succeed. And so that's where my students usually are. So most of the time it's kind of like a game. And I like to make it a game. I like to say, okay, well, who can figure this out first? Did you find this? And then all of a sudden, everybody's trying to, to look for it. And then after, while, after all, who doesn't like a competition? I love a good competition. Um, and I tend to give prizes. And so over the course of our time away from school, doing our STEM challenges, um, you know, if a student turned theirs in first in a class, they earned um, a Sonic flush. And I actually went to Sonic, got the flush, left it on their porch and ran away. Um, and so, or I think in one of my STEM challenges that I'm sharing with you today, um, I had a competition with it and I had my friends vote on the best project and the top four people got a prize. The grand prize was a pizza party. Now, how, how am I gonna do a pizza party when we're on, <laughs> COVID restrictions, stay at home. Well, we did a Zoom party. I ordered pizza, had it delivered, 
um, pizza and soda delivered to my student's family. And then I ordered pizza and soda for my family, excuse me. And we sat down on Zoom and um, played music, played a couple of games, we played Kahoot, um, and we had a pizza party. The other kids earned um, like gift cards, Amazon gift cards. I had a couple of friends who were um, willing to give me gift cards for Amazon and then Robux. You know, these kids love Robux. Um, and so um, that's what we did. So it was a little competition and we had fun. All right, so the first STEM challenge that we did was a cotton ball cannon. Now, I found this project, um, something similar that I created with my students um, and I adapted it from a project on Instructables. So the materials, the materials that were needed for this particular project, um, you needed two toilet paper rolls, some scissors, some tape, a pencil, two rubber bands, um, a cotton ball or other small items to launch. Now, mind you, if a student sent me a message and said, Ms. Johnson, we don't have any toilet paper rolls, I was like, you're lying. You, everybody bought all the toilet paper. So I knew that they had toilet paper rolls. But if they didn't have toilet paper rolls, they could have cut a paper towel roll or something like that. Um, or they could have made a roll from paper. So um, again, remember, STEM helps you be ingenious. So ingenuity really works. Um, tape, I think the original thing asked them to have like duct tape or something like that. But you know, some people don't have duct tape. I had um, masking tape and other people, you know, I think some kids said, well, I only had glue. We'll use it, use the glue. Um, a pencil, two rubber bands, I think one kid said that all he had was the stuff that came on broccoli, and I was like, try it. I don't know if that worked. Um, and then some people were like, well, I don't have a cotton ball, but they figured it out. So um, here's a vid. I, hold on. I'm not exactly sure. Can I share video, or do I have to stop sharing? No, you can share video. Um, when you s typed share screen, there was a button there that allowed you to share system sounds. So if there's sound in the video, nobody will okay, hear it unless so you would click. Share so, computer sound. Right, right. So you can, un you can stop sharing and then go back to share, click that okay. button, and then they can hear it. All right. And then I'm going to say share computer sound. You got it. Okay, I don't think I did that right. Hold on. Well, let's try it. Let's see how it works. I don't know if there's sound associated with it. The sound's coming through well. Okay. So essentially what I did was I gave the students the link to the YouTube video. And then they were off on their own. They were to their own devices. like I don't have a hole puncher and I was like just cut the hole through it with the pencil like don't worry about what you don't have worry about what you do have and of course I had students who said oh well, I didn't do it the same way and I'm like did it work and they were like yes and I'm like awesome you figured it out no big deal Now the age group that I work with is um, sixth graders, and so this was very doable for my sixth graders. I even had my fourth grader um, do the exact same thing, and she was able to do it without any difficulty. All right, 
So, I'm just going to stop that one for just a second. And so, um, one of the things that I did with my students when we worked on this particular project was, um, if they did this, the way that it was explained in the video, et cetera, they just basically copied it, the same thing. Um, they didn't change anything, um, they didn't improve it, or they didn't innovate it. Then they got like 15 points or something like that. So the goal through, the, um, through our time away was for them to um, get about 50 points, and 50 points would get them um, Steam flags. So we have certain stuff at our school that the kids can get. And so they got steam flags. And so um, they knew that if they got a certain number of points, they would get like a token after the token is like a pencil bag or something. So they knew that there were things that they were working towards. Um, however, um, they also knew that they could earn like Amazon gift card or a Sonic gift card or something like that. And that's just because I have friends that are really, really awesome who support me. So um, this is an example of um, something that one of my students did. And they, so in order for them to get extra points, they could do a video. So this is a picture of their launcher. And then here is um, their video. Simple. <laughs> right. So um, one of the things that I did with my students was um, I also gave them the opportunity to innovate. Now, if they did an innovation, that meant that they upped their prize points. And so it's all, they know I'm about innovation. You know, don't just give me the exact same thing all over again. You're not getting any points for the same thing. You didn't do anything extra. So they were given the opportunity to extend learning by innovating their prototypes. And um, I, I thought I had examples, but I was telling Mitch earlier that I lost half of my stuff and I had to recreate it really quickly. But I had students who um, created intricate launchers with springs. They hot glued springs in there. Um, they were amazing. And so I always give my students the opportunity to go above and beyond anything that we're working on because, well, why not? Plus, they get um, more points. All right, so the next challenge that we're looking at is Lego Picasso. Now, I base this on a um, Lego painting on Instructables. So um, if you haven't figured it out yet, I love Instructables. Instructables is one of my favorite places to go for um, stuff. So, um, so there were two versions. The first version, I call it low no tech. And the low no tech version is you get a picture or a drawing that you like, assorted Legos, you need a base plate. And some kids don't have a base plate, but they've got plenty of Legos. So I just tell them, hey, get the bottom of a cereal box, cut it off, or not the bottom, the side of a cereal box, cut that off, and use that. It works just the same. Um, and to get the Legos to stick, if you take a piece of tape, like masking tape, and you turn it over so the sticky side is facing up, and just put it on there, you can get your Legos to stick. That's just the tip. And the only other thing that they needed was their imagination. Now, the tech version, like say, for instance, a student didn't have any Legos, then they could use a picture or a drawing, and then they could do um, Tinkercad. And Tinkercad requires registration. I actually had students who did both. And so um, if you've never used Tinkercad, it is a really, I would say, I've taught engineering at the high school level and at the college level. And if you've used like Autodesk, um, like AutoCAD or any Autodesk product, um, it is a, it's, I would call it the Crayola version or the Lego version of like AutoCAD. Um, it has its limitations, but it does teach students how to think um, in 3D, spatially paying attention to um, X, Y, and Z, and how they can utilize that, as well as you can move things around. So 
Um, these were some of the examples that my students did. Pretty good, huh? Wow. Look at that starry night. Can you hear me, Mitch? Yes, yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So um, they actually did this. Um, the, the kid that did the starry night one, they sent me pictures um, as they worked through it. And I was just amazed at what they were able to do. And this other one, she was like, well, can I do this picture? I don't have those colored Legos. I was like, you can choose whatever picture you want. And I even had a student do um, a picture of um, Lisa Simpson with some sunglasses. It was really cute. And so um, these are just some of the examples that my students did using Legos. Now, I didn't, I didn't tell them which picture to choose. And I think had I, t had I chosen the picture, um, if I were at school, I would choose the picture. And I would tell the students, okay, this group, you guys are gonna work on this one, this group, you're gonna work on this one, and this group, you guys are gonna work on this one. And I would make sure that they had the Legos, the color schemes that they needed in order to um, have something similar come out. And I might even give them really detailed directions. Um, and then give them some, you know, a variety of other colored Legos or whatever so that they could do um, their own rendition. Of but since we were at home, there was no, there was no reason for me to give them any restrictions whatsoever. The only thing that restricted them was their imagination. And so um, I was amazed at what they came up with. And um, I, I believe the, the student that did the Starry Night, they got first place and I sent them um, we had our pizza party and the student, um, the other student, she got, I think she got like $10 in Robux. She was happy. So I don't think there were any losers in that particular um, category. But then I also had, um, I could not find um, my student's example from um, Tinkercad. However, I did want to show you um, how you could go into Tinkercad and utilize Tinkercad. So, um, has anybody used Tinkercad before? And you can put it in the chat if you'd like. Has anybody used it before? I've used it. Not often. You used it? Yeah, it looks like Rose has used it. Okay. Yeah, and one of the cool things about Tinkercad, it's kind of like, you know, 3D Bear. Like, you can share your designs. You can share your designs, like, on singing birds, but you could also 3D print your stuff. And, you know, 3D printing is really big right now. Um, you know, 3D printers have changed a lot in the past three years. Um, I remember the first 3D printer I had in my classroom. It was huge, and it stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the maintenance on that sucker was, like, ridiculous. And you had to buy their filament. And the filament was like $100 a roll. What? Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, let's see if I can, I'm going to check and see if I can get into Tinkercad. Um, I just want to kind of play around a little bit and see if you can see what I see. Now we see your browser and it looks like you have more than one tab open on your browser. I have lots of millions. I am horrible about that. Horrible. <laughs> okay, so the way that you get started in Tinkercad um, is you have to register first. Um, there's, if you're a teacher there or you have a classroom, you can go in to teach and you can put your students into um, classrooms um, and or like different classes, and then you can give them a code. So I usually post my code and their nicknames, they have their nicknames in their notebooks, but I post my codes on the wall and so they know whenever we're using Tinkercad, they just take out their iPad and they go and um, if they haven't, if they don't have the code on them, then they just go over and they grab it and then they get started. But the way that you would get started is you would say, 
create a new design. All right, so I think the coolest part about um, Tinkercad is that if I go down here and I want to edit the grid, and the grid is the work plane that you see, I can edit it so that I can work in millimeters, inches, or bricks. Bricks, Lego bricks. Um, so I can edit it to work with whatever I want. Now, I chose bricks, however, um, I have been known to have my students start a design in millimeters and then switch it out and um, change it into inches and look at the differences between that. It makes a difference. And I can always tell whether or not my students are paying attention to what I told them to do because their design will tell on them. The data does not lie. <laughs> And so, um, so if I choose bricks, then it's going to give me a 25 by 25 brick plane. Okay, so if I hit update grid, it updates the grid and everything. So the snap grid is one brick. What that means is that as you're attaching, it's going to snap with the, di um, with the dimensions of one brick. So, um, in, in the example that I give you guys, and I'll go back to, um, to what I was on just a moment ago. I don't think I've done that before. Like click the link and, but anyway, we'll, we'll go back to it. <laughs> I hope I can get back to it. It's right there. Um, but um, if I take a box and I just, you just take it and you move the shape over. Pretty simple. This thing right here, at the top, this little cone, that allows you to move it up and down. The numbers are showing you the length and the width. So this is Z, basically. And then anytime I, I can go and I can grab something and move it over, and I can create whatever it is that I want to create. So um, let me go back. Yay, OK. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to go back. All right, so this is what we just did. Um, we went and we changed the grid, updated the grid, and I created a noob. Now, my daughter was like, I didn't know you knew what that was. Um, so let's say a student had a picture of, um, this was the picture they chose. They could go into Tinkercad and they could create the exact same thing in Tinkercad. Um, but the best part about Tinkercad is they could share it with you. They could send, send it to you in an email. They could share it in Thingiverse. Um, or they could even send, it, even send it to the 3D printer. Or if they're not at school and they don't have a 3D printer, they could also share it um, with a 3D um, printing service. So they could download it to print, and that's either for like a 3D printer, and these are the different formats that they use, .obj, .stl, um, laser cutting, um, and I've done that before with um, a laser, laser cutter. Um, you could send it um, to the 3D printer, MakerBot, whatever. It, it just it works with all of those but if you if you don't you can always 3d print and you know you've got your little um disc and you can put it into your 3d printer and it'll print out and then you could also take your design to a different level you could use um autodesk fusion i love autodesk fusion um or any of those my mini factory thingiverse vspace um all of those places is where kids can either export or share their designs. I really love Tinkercad, but you can go even further, which is what I would do. I would go even further with Tinkercad. I would go into code blocks. Has anybody used code blocks? 
I've used Blockscat, which is probably very similar, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, it's very similar to Scratch. So you're using block-based coding, and then, um, so this is what I tell my students to do. If they get finished with a challenge, like say for instance, we had done this at school in class, I would tell them, hey, I'll give you 50 extra, um, you know, I'll give you 50 extra points in Steam Flag if you could um, do it in code blocks. And they'll be like, what? And so they'll do it. And, or they'll try really hard. And so um, this took me maybe um, 10 minutes. Um, but the, the, I think the part that causes students to have to like really think about it, um, think about what they're doing, is when you start doing this X, Y, and Z. And understanding how when you um, initiate something, when you create something, where does it land on that work plane? And then, then you have to figure out what do I have to do to make it move to where I want it to go? And I tell the students all the time, if you instantiate something, loop, everything that you create is gonna go to the same place, zero, zero, zero. Zero for X, zero for Y, and zero for Z. If you want it to go somewhere else, then you have to tell it where to go. And that's why they have to go in and look for the different um, commands, if you will. So rotate, if you want it to rotate, if you want it to move, and then you have to start playing around with it to determine where you want it to move to. And so the cool thing about, um, code blocks is that once you run it, you can also share it um, and it turns into an animated um, GIF that just, that just kind of like lays everything out for you. And this is the way that I, I have my students share it with me like this, because I want to see how they created whatever it was that they were creating. And so, um, you and know, I, know Tink, real, I know Tinkercad uh, is free. Is code blocks also free? It's a part of Tinkercad, ah, so yes, okay. yeah, it's absolutely free, um, and I've enjoyed using it, so yes, it is absolutely free. I love it. Um, so especially, I think um, the class that I teach is a Project Lead the Way class, and they wanted us to use, um, I forget exactly which, but I didn't use it, I just used Tinkercad, because Tinkercad was um, more user-friendly, um, and we were able to utilize it without, you know, having to worry about, you know, do we have um, a site license for this? Um, you know, the computer lab down, what do we do? And so um, it made a lot more sense to use Tinkercad and it's a go-to for my students, um, especially when we have 3D printing days and they know that they can, um, if they create it, they can build it. That's my, that's my thing. You got to create it. If you don't create it, you can't build it. And so, um, they know that when we have those 3D printing days, if they were able to create something, they can sign in the log and they can go ahead and get started 3D printing. All right. We've, I can't hear you. Sorry, I was, I was muted. So what were, the, what were the lessons that you wanted to teach in that, in that class? Were they, you started off with, with the, with the, painting or the, the picture and then they use blocks to try to mimic the picture what was um, what what did they learn well they learned um, depth what I was really trying to teach them was depth um, we were looking at X Y and Z utilizing the X Y and Z axis and covering a work plane mm -hmm. And so that was the major um, spatial orientation. You know, what happens if I do this? Now, if I were at school, I would have taught that lesson over the course of probably two weeks. Mm -hmm. It would probably taken me two weeks to teach that and for the students to complete the entire painting um, in like groups of two or three. It would have taken them, it would have taken me probably about um, two weeks and, and not me teaching the whole thing, but maybe two days, 
two and a half days of me teaching them, you know, how to set up their, um, their base plate. Mm -hmm. And then also showing them how to um, orient it. And then showing them the difference, what the difference of how they would stack them up. And then I would have them um, write out a, actually write out a script on how they created it. Mm -hmm. And so it would probably take um, about two weeks for them to be able to um, complete the whole thing. And uh, by giving it to them at home, was it also two weeks or more or less? Um, I gave them, um, I think it was two weeks. Um, but I had students who were finished with theirs and some of them were very simplistic, kind of like that noob. Um, some of them were very simplistic, but then you had those people that did those amazing pieces. Right. And, you know, I remember I talked to one parent and I asked them as well, how long did it take them to do that? That's amazing. And I was not expecting all of that. Um, I was, I was, I think I was seeing maybe 20 to 30% of my students in, in my live classes and less than that in my like Google classroom space. And so um, I asked one parent, I said, how long did it take your daughter to do that? And she said, oh, it took her about two days. Um, I was like, two days? What? <laughs> I was like, that would have taken me, well, first of all, I would have had to focus that long. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, but she said it took her two days. Once she got all of the, once she picked out all of the colors of Legos that she wanted to use, after that, she said it was smooth sailing. She started, um, she said she started in the middle of the painting and moved out. And I was like, oh, because see, I would have probably started on the side and moved across, but um, you know, different people see things differently. I was amazed at what those kids were able to yeah. do. Amazing. But yeah, I would, that's, I would teach X, Y, and Z that way. Um, and I think it, it helps students um, understand what needs to happen when, like if they were in Tinkercad and they were trying to maybe, um, we had, we built a neighborhood in Tinkercad, specifically we built it in code blocks and trying to get them to understand that, you know, we, we built the house. I showed them how to build the house, but then they had to add on windows, a door, um, they, uh, like trees, etc. They had to put a sign. They had to create a school, a store, and the, the store had to have a sign that um, was in the air, you know? And so um, I taught them how to, to build the house, but everything else was on them. And wow. so for them to figure it out, I'm like, remember what we did with our Legos? How would you do that with the house? And they're like, oh, and then they had to, you know, they played with it a little bit. And then once one person figured it out, and I'm like, is anybody, does anybody want to be an expert? Anybody want to be an expert? And so those people that were experts, they would take appointments. <laughs> and then the kids would go over <laughs> and they would, I was like, don't do it for them but you can talk them through it, show them the tools that they need, and then they can go back and they can teach the people at their table. And so, um, you know, being the expert was the thing to be. Everybody wanted to be an expert about something. And so pretty soon we had lots of experts and it was, it was an amazing experience. And so um, it's, you know, that's what we use the Lego Picasso for was depth, spatial, um, spatial reasoning, X, Y, and Z. And it works really well. <laughs> That's great. All right. So my final one is I spy um, with 3D Bear. Now, this was part of the one that I lost. And so I do apologize um, in advance. But I like to use I spy. Um, this is like a scavenger hunt. So you ever remember playing? Um, we used to play I spy um, in the car as we were traveling from California to Texas. That's a long ride. <laughs> and so one of the things that my parents would have us do is we would play I Spy. Um, 
And, and so I, the way that I use iSpy with 3D Bear is I like to smash it with another app um, called Wallamy. Has anybody heard of Wallamy before? I know you've heard of 3D Bear, but have you heard of Wallamy? I haven't. Okay. Any chatters? Anybody no, out in the? Fine. No. Okay. So, um, well, let's talk about 3D Bear. So, 3D Bear, we know it's a fun AR app. It integrates 3D modeling, augment, augmented reality, and 3D printing into the classroom or away from the classroom, as we are now. It makes learning easy. It's effective. It's fun. And there are some free features, and I'm sure Mitch can talk about all the other stuff. Um, but as a teacher, I really enjoy all the lesson plans. I love the challenges. Um, on Friday at my school, we have, um, if my students earn it, they get a free day. And free is not like they're just wilding out, being wild in my classroom, no. Free means that they get to sign up for the stuff that they want to do. And a lot of times, my students would sign up to use um, the iPad, and then I would log on with my 3D Bear um, classroom. And so uh, they enjoyed that a lot. And so it was one of the, the things that students loved a lot. And so all the lesson plans and challenges for assignments are free. Um, you can use those to create AR scenes. Um, we've printed, we've 3D printed some things, and I wish that I was at my school because I had all of a, we, we had a whole bunch of stuff 3D printed just sitting on the ledge. Um, but you can go into Sketchfab, Thingiverse, you can do your own models, and it's awesome to create um, just stuff to, for, for kids to do. And we would do these things on Free Friday. Now, Wallamy is an AR app. It allows you to hide messages in the real world. And so I just wanted to give you guys, um, like show you a little bit about what, what it does and show you how it could work with um, iCloud. Oh, I did something wrong. Go back. Here we go. So essentially you take a picture you share it and then you can give somebody access or not you can make it public if you want okay so that's essentially the way that it works. But so in our iSpy game, we can use 3D Bear. So for instance, um, what, what it was supposed to do was it was supposed to, I had a picture, and I don't know what happened to my picture, but the picture in Wallamy. So I took the picture in Wallamy, and it's the same area that I have this ball that I got from 3D Bear, um, but it said, I spy something that rolls. And so then they had to go around and look with their phone. So essentially they're just going around, taking their phone, looking until they find something that rolls. Okay. Now, um, when I played this with my students at school, I would change up where the picture was because some of the kids figured out I have to be in the same exact space as where Miss Johnson was. And so they would look on the wall for like different posters or whatever on the wall. And so I try very hard to make sure that I'm in a place that is very clean. Maybe they can look at the texture of the wall or something like that. And so um, I've used different um, themes with this using um, 3D Bear. We did a study of, in their science class, they were looking at the solar system. 
And so if you look within 3D Bear, there's a whole list of um, like the planets, et cetera. And so what we did is we used Wallamy um, to give them the questions. So it was, it was like a scavenger hunt, you know, which, um, which planet has rings? We all know which one that one is. And so they knew they had to go around looking for it. And um, are you pulling it up, Mitch? <laughs> Right. I just installed Wallamy on my I just installed Wallamy on my phone and I was pulling it up, but of course now I have to go through the instructions because I've never used it before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so um when my students would use it at school, it was kind of fun because I would warn my administration um ahead of time that we were doing an AR scavenger hunt and they would have their iPads because we weren't supposed to have our iPads um well it's for instructional purposes only. And so <laughs> um, I also allowed students to use their phones um, because we would do this quite often. Um, and so they would be walking through the halls um, looking for the questions because they could find, you know, if, there were, if they were in 3D Bear, they were finding all kinds of stuff. And they're just like, but what are we supposed to do? And so they had to go and find the messages and they had to do them in order. We couldn't bounce around. You had to do them in order. And so um, this was a way to just kind of extend um, that usage of 3D Bear because we would create scenes all the time. Um, but using Wallamy helped us, um, made it kind of like a quiz. They had to have all their pictures in order and then they would submit them. And it was, that was probably the most fun. I, that's probably the most fun usage of 3D Bear that, um, that we've had um, when we used it with another app. So, so for, always, so for yeah. example, like if I'm just thinking that if you're doing a field trip in a park or, you know, that, that they go to a sp spot and wallow me and, they, and up pops a question that says, you know, build a scene with sheeps and cows. And so then right there... Yeah. They, they go into 3D Bear, they build a scene with sheeps and cows, they take a picture, and then they move on, and they'd say, mm -hmm. oh, here's another question, and then that would pop up, and then they would build a scene using 3D Bear yes. then. Yes, yes. So it kind of takes it to, oh, let's just, hey, what did you see? No, how about, did you, you know, find the, how did, how did those two things work together? So yeah. you could talk about ego, but, Anything. You could do anything with this. Now, that would be a little bit harder to use in remote because if you don't have a central place for the kids to be, you can't really right. be setting up the Wallamies. But yeah, but you, obviously, you can use 3D Bear, but you couldn't have them go on a scavenger hunt like that. Yeah. Um, I would think that at home, it would probably be easier to um, give the kids, kids a list of items that they need to find and you've already dispersed those items around and if you say you have to go in order from here to here or from smallest to largest or um you know you can even calculate that if you're looking at just um like maybe the balls you could like calculate the diameter of it um you can make everything a math problem if you wanted to Right. Or see, one of the things 3D Bear comes with 3D shapes. So yes. um, there's uh, spheres, there's, um, there's spheres, cube, cylinder, half cylinder, half sphere. So you could just, you could say to the kids, well, in your house, I want you to take, I want you to take a picture using a 3D Bear object next to a real object that and you have to find something that looks like a sphere, something that looks like a cube, something that looks like a cylinder, and something that looks like, let's say, a triangular prism. And then... Right. And I would even have them, I, I would do like area, perimeter, mm -hmm. you know, give them a problem and say, okay, so the length of this side is three centimeters. The length of this side is, and, and make them find it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not interesting. Yeah. Well, there we Amanda are. Says, can, 
So there's a question, can the AR work off an image rather than walking around? Um, does does Wallamy, Wallamy really works off walking around, right? So you, you couldn't, you couldn't take in Wallamy a picture of a page in a book and then have the kids have their own copy of that book and look in Wallamy and have that pop out, right? It, it, it has to be a wall basically, right? I think that um, there are some um, limitations um, because when you do the pictures or whatever, it, um, it can record your location. Mm -hmm. And um, that's part of the way that Wallamy works is that you kind of have to have, but you can also turn off your location. And so that's, that's one way that you could utilize it in that way mm -hmm. by turning off your location. Okay. But honestly, I haven't tried that. Yeah. So, it's interesting. but it's worth a try. Yeah. Okay. Are there other questions from people? No, these, these sound, these sounds exciting. And you and you find that when the kids are, are you know, all for all, all three, um, the ki are, how well are the kids learning the material versus let's say in a traditional classroom where you're talking to them about it and they're reading about it. So that was so. So, are you finding the kids? Um, are they are they equally as engaged, or are they more engaged? Can you hear me? Are you talking to me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Actually, sorry, Ika. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, um, I find that whenever my students beg for challenges, mm -hmm. they would prefer to do challenges over anything and I would consider my class to be the fun class mm -hmm. and so even with um, my class being the fun class they love it when we take a break between projects that we have to do and do a challenge mm -hmm. so um, I think it's more motivating I, I usually will say hey we've got three more days on this project next thing up send challenge the kids are like yeah <laughs> Yeah, so they get really excited about the challenges. Good. Um, okay, well, thank you. And then what, what's, you're now off, right? You're off until, you said, like, until August? August 12th is when we go back to school. Well, that's when the students are supposed to come back. So I assume teachers are back August 1st. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a question. Um, so Tinkercad, um, how, did you, how did you learn how to use Tinkercad? Did you go through the tutorials? Did you attend a class? Yes. One of the ways that I started using Tinkercad with my students is I had them, we went through the tutorials. Um, and that was so that they could get used to some of the um, different features. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, in my lesson plan for that particular day, um, we worked on shapes and how to move things from side to side, mm -hmm. how to change the dimensions. We did all of that as, um, we did the basics first before I gave them, we started on a challenge. So um, there was no reason um, for anyone not to have that information. So we did that from the beginning. And yep. so that's how students, and then after that, um, well, if we were working on something in particular, I would stop my students and I would say, okay, time out, um, let me show you a tip. And then I would show them how to do something. And then I would have them model it. And I'm like, okay, back to work. And then they would go back. And it, sometimes it was just the stuff that I noticed that they were struggling with. Um, and it was just something very small. And then I also explained to them, because we were using iPads, that um, Tinkercad was not built on that, in, in that format. Mm -hmm. And that when you change format, like using a phone or a tablet or a computer, that you lose some functionality. Mm -hmm. And so I explained to them that it works so much better 
if you are on a computer. Ah, okay. And so um, it's just it's it's just easier to use all the tools if you're on a computer. But um, somehow or another, they figured it out on that iPad, and I I get amazing work on the iPad. So. I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Are there other questions from people? Uh, because I think you know, these are these are you know three really good examples. Um, the first two can be uh, are great, especially for when the kids are at home. And the last example, I can just see kids going around the school, taking these challenges and getting really excited. Oh, did you see this one? Oh, did you see that one? What did you do? So um, it's it's so cool when the kids get uh, engaged and motivated, and they want to share with each other. So yeah, Ika, well, thank you. Thank you so much for letting me do this. This was fun. Oh, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. Um, you're, um, anyhow, I'm just amazed. You're obviously a phenomenal teacher. So I, w I wish I had had you when I was a kid. Uh, but uh, you probably weren't even born years, then. 26 years, right? Mitch. 26 wow. years. Wow. <laughs> uh, a lot of experience there. Well, thank you again. And I'll see you online. I'll uh, hopefully we'll get to meet in person. Thank you, everybody, awesome. for showing up. And uh, we're going to, you know, this is recorded. So if you have people that you want to see this, just send them over to the EdChat Interactive Archive and they can view this themselves. And we'll have a copy of the slides there also. Okay. So everybody, have a great afternoon. Uh, see you in July, I guess. Bye. All righty. Thank you. Okay.